This is like my new favorite thing. I am so excited about it. I cannot tell you how much I've been waiting to film this video. Look, I have my Santa hat. These are among my favorite types of videos to film. And so I'm very excited because I found a ton of different like Christmassy kitchen gadgets as well as some recipes that we've never tried before. And we are gonna test them today and see what is worth making and buying. And today's video is sponsored by KiwiCo, one of my favorite brands for creating these like crates, these projects that your kids can put together that are all around art and engineering, math, science. And they're always done in such a fun and memorable way. Like my kids really love the koala crate as well as the kiwi crate, but they have a ton of different ones for all different ages that you can choose from. My kids and my niece actually just finished the kiwi crate a couple of days ago. So hang on, I have to show you. So this really cool, like, um, like mechanical sweeper thing. It's really cool, hang on. So here it is. Admire their beautiful artwork right here. And basically this thing, it just like scoops up all of the pieces and they just found that to be so cool. I think it's really cool. And not only are the projects themselves like really well put together, everything's thoughtfully designed, good quality product. A lot of it's like wood, which is amazing. But each crate also comes with a booklet that has all of this additional information on the why of how this works and more ways to play. Just a lot of a great additional information that I found to be really helpful. And we actually find these to be really fun like play date activities. So for example, like my sister and my niece Harley were over and so we were all building it together. Most of the subscription crates retail for under 20 US or around $30 Canadian, which I think is great for like a fun group activity. And I find these make great presents, like Christmas presents, birthday presents, whatever it is, especially at like before I had kids, I had no idea what to get kids for a birthday. And so I wish I had something like this because it just makes the whole thing a lot easier. It's a great way to bond and connect. I have a link I will put in the comment section as well as the info bar to your first month for free on any of these subscription crates over here. Just click the link, it'll automatically apply it and then you get a month for free, which is pretty fantastic. And feel free to share it with friends and family because who doesn't love to save money and this way none of us will struggle for Christmas presents this year. Big thanks to KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. And now let's dive into some recipes. This whale guy over here. I promised I would bring it back to them. <laughs> and we're gonna start off strong with a recipe that has over 20 million views. And that is a sugar cookie fudge. It just stopped recording. Combines a lot of my favorite things. You know the drill over to the stove. All right, so into your pot, you are gonna add two 12 ounce bags of white chocolate chips. One and a quarter cup of sugar cookie mix. This is just like the powdered stuff. And one can of sweetened condensed milk. And then we're gonna stir it continuously on medium low, closer to the low, just not on like a low low. And this needs to be stirred continuously so that it doesn't burn. We're just gonna keep doing this until everything is melted and blended together. All right, let's skip to the good part. Okay, there we go. It's, it's I have to keep stirring it because it will burn. So now at this point, now we're gonna bring it back over because now we get to add sprinkles. All right, you gotta move fast on this. So now we are adding no more than half a cup of um, sprinkles. We're gonna add that in and stir. Don't melt, don't melt, don't melt, don't melt, don't melt, don't melt. And then it's gonna go into this nice little baking dish I have here. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge and it needs to cool there for about an hour and a half. Then we can taste test it. Okay, in you go. Also, she said to pat out any like additional like, grease, I guess, if you see any. So I will do that as well. And uh, yeah, <laughs> on to the next. Okay, now on to a kitchen gadget. And this is one I've never tried before, but this feeds my inner like Christmas being in the kitchen baking soul. And that is these adorable like pie, like mini pies in the shape of like Christmassy things. Really only one of them is a Christmas tree. The rest of them are like kind of wintry, but still. If I'm not still using these when I am a grandma, I'm gonna be mad at myself. We have like obviously a, a snowflake as well as mittens and a tree. So I figured we'd do one of each. And the way that these work is they have these little designs sort of on the back. Oh, I just smudged it. Fine. They have these little imprints on the back here that are supposed to create like air vents, which I suppose is important when you're making a pie, which I would definitely know. So we are going to start with the mittens. This is like pre-made um, <laughs> flaky pastry, by the way. In case anyone was wondering on my level of grandma-ness, is this whole made? No, it's not. Okay, and then you smoosh it down. I think it's gone all the way through. It has not gone all the way through. Let's try that again. Like when I'm so sure too, I'm like, yeah, it definitely has. Like it's, it's, it's so thin. Do I need to like 
do this. Kind of like when I play Play-Doh with my son. You gotta wiggle it around, buddy. Okay, okay, all right, maybe. Oh, I think it worked. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. It didn't cut it through, but I don't know if it's supposed to. Maybe it's supposed to. No. No, I don't think so. Okay, let's do the other one. Push, give it a wiggle. Oh. Then I figured for the actual, we'll do the Christmas trees, well, obviously. But I figured for the um, the filling, we would do the jams from the last video. I mean, you could do anything. You could do apple, you could do strawberry rhubarb, you could do cherry. Cherry would be really pretty. They don't cut all the way through very well. Minor design flaw. The edges of the plastic aren't sharp. Do you need to be this careful? Am I going to be this careful? Yes, I am. And we're gonna put these in here. Like so. And then we're gonna fill it with some jams. I want to go check how much filling to put in these. And I think these are supposed to come out. Like I don't think they're supposed to be in there. Are you supposed to be in here? No, it's not. Well, that's annoying. How am I supposed to get this out? Did I push hard enough? I thought so. Oh, can you imagine doing more of these? Ugh, because you know I'm not gonna settle until these are like <laughs> perfect type of grandma I am. All right, well, let me get these all cut out then. Okay, I did it a little bit differently for the Christmas trees. I basically stamped it down and then like ripped off all the rest of the dough around it. That was way easier. Gonna keep it simple, fill it with some jam. And then I'm gonna add water to the edges. Then we stamp it and close it. Oh my gosh, it looks like those teeth that you see at the dentist's office. Moosh it together, moosh, moosh. Did it work? <gasps> it did! It's a little mitten. Well, that's adorable. Oh my gosh, do I love this? I think I love this. Okay, let's open it. Stop. If these bake up really well, this is like my new favorite thing. I am so excited about it. Okay, I'm gonna finish the tree and then I'm gonna stick them in the oven. We're going on to the next thing, which is color changing. And it's these like hot chocolate packs that change color. Basically it's white and then you add hot water or hot milk to it and then it changes colors. So I wanna know A, what it tastes like. It's like, it's really good. But also B, um, like what's what's the color? Like what are we talking here? So I have two here that I thought would be fun. Green because Christmas. Pink because it has a flamingo on it and I'm already obsessed. So I need to put 200 milliliters. I had like 170 to 220. So 200 back in here. We have our hot chocolate. This one's green, very white. It's white. Let's see. Oh my gosh, it does. Changes color, I'm so excited. Christopher, look at my hot chocolate. It's like a St. Patty's Day green. It is, but we're gonna pretend it's Christmas tree green. You know what this needs? This needs, wait for it, wait for it. Schnapps? Yes, it does. It obviously it needs a candy cane. Obviously it needs a candy cane. Okay, let's try this now. Is it any good? I don't know. It tastes like white chocolate and my candy cane is melting. I don't know what I was expecting from a candy cane. It's good hot chocolate. I like it. All right, let's try the pink one. And it's pink. I think they all taste the same, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to double check. This is like a Pepto-Bismol pink. I don't know if this is as appealing as like, kind of wanted it to be. It seems to dissolve well though, which is important. Color though, I'm not not a big fan of this pink. I'm a big fan of hot chocolate though. I don't know, they're kind of cute. I think they'd be fun to put in like, a, like as a stocking stuffer, you know? Like they taste good and it's kind of like a fun little party trick. But what I'm actually really curious about is putting them into something that was supposed to go in another video and didn't. It got moved to my freezer for a while and it's actually a Shark Tank product. And it is a company that makes like cookie, shot glasses. And so I felt like I needed to save it for this video. So I got like a like a party pack. I got chocolate chip, churro, double chocolate, and red velvet. That way we could kind of sample some of them. The company's called Dirty Cookie, by the way. And they said that if you're not gonna use them right away, to freeze them for up to three months, which I've done. So this is the cookie, the chocolate chip cookie one. Nice, like a thick wall. And it says to microwave these before you put anything in them, but there's no um, conclusion as to what that time is. Like somewhere it said five seconds, another five to seven, and then another 10 to 15. So I'm not sure. Sure. I'm gonna err on the side of caution though. And I'm gonna say six seconds. I don't know. I bet it could go a little bit longer. Just a little bit. Three seconds. Okay. And I wanna know what happens. Now this hot chocolate is not super, super warm. Don't worry, but it's a little bit warm. So I wanna know what happens 
if I put this in it. Oh no! Spilling everywhere. We all knew that was gonna happen. So first of all, in terms of holding capacity, it's not a lot, though I assume most people would put like alcohol in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very sippable. However, if it was hot chocolate, I feel like it would melt the cookie very fast. You could totally do like a, like a polar bear shot or some sort of, I don't know, chocolate, peppermint kind of a vibe. Like it would be really good. However, do they taste good? It has to have some structural integrity to it. So it's not like a super soft cookie, but it's not hard either. And the chocolate coating to it, that's a nice touch. I'm gonna save the rest of these until Chris gets back because he's currently out and I want him to taste test these. And in the meantime, we're gonna go on to the next thing. All right, now while I have my uh, hot chocolate and also my coffee, we are gonna make the first savory thing today. And that is a cranberry and jalapeno dip, which I think it sounds really, really good. Apparently it's just an absolute showstopper of a dip and people are just clamoring to get more of these. So I got really excited and now I wanna make it. So first you need to start with um, fresh cranberries, which I don't know if you know this, but that is very difficult to track down. Chris on a wild goose chase trying to find these. Okay, give them a little rinse. And this dip, uh, it has some steps. She a little extra. So we're gonna get a bunch of it done tonight, but then we actually like get to taste test it tomorrow. So it's fine. So first thing I'm gonna do is the painstaking job of rough chopping these cranberries. She said you can use like a hand chopper. Isn't that the knife? But she said not to use one of those, um, those machine chopper things because it, it makes everything too watered down. Aren't they so pretty on the inside? I don't know, I just think that's really pretty. I say that now having just gotten into this. I will probably be saying something very different when I'm done. And I have to cut all of these. For whatever reason, I was expecting a pit for actually for no reason. There, why, why would there be a pit in here, Rachel? But I did and I just <laughs> needed you to know that. So I'm gonna put them into this bowl when I'm done. We're gonna add all sorts of like fun stuff to this. Like it's not too bad other than the, the chopping of the cranberries. I feel like this is gonna take a long time. And then the other thing I'm gonna be adding to this as well is I'm gonna add in a quarter cup of green onions. I feel like that's about a quarter cup. Okay, a little bit more than a quarter cup. That's fine. Who doesn't love a good green onion, you know? And then two jalapeno. Now obviously you can put the seeds in or out depending on how spicy you like it. Mm, maybe I'm gonna do without the seeds or like minimal seeds. Cause I like it like a hint of, of spicy, but I don't know if I would want it that spicy. Get a bigger bowl here. Oh, also the, the pastries are done. I wanna tell you the first thing I thought of when I saw them. So spoiler alert, one of them exploded and other spoiler alert, it wasn't its fault. So this right here is what most people look like at Christmas time. And then this is me. <laughs> and again, it's not the mold's fault. It is entirely my fault. I got too excited and I didn't seal it and like wet the outsides before pressing it down. So again, my bad, not these. You can see how adorable these look. Like even the snowflake, it turned out a lot better than I was expecting. And what I did is I like pressed down on the actual mold itself. Like I re um, remolded it and then pressed down to like cut it out. That was a lot faster. And I think that looks amazing. I am very proud of myself, but I had to show you that before I taste tested it because um, yeah, that is the thing that happened. We're gonna taste test it now. Of course, of course. Would it be better with like a homemade filling? Yes, it would. Is it delicious anyway? Yeah, absolutely. So um, let me finish up all of this chopping. All right, I got it all chopped in a bowl. It looks really pretty, but now we have to add on a little like it's like a sugary mixture. So I have a, just under a cup of sugar. They said between three quarters of a cup and a cup, depending on your taste. So I kind of went in the middle of that. And I need about a tablespoon of lemon juice. Don't know why I said it like that, but here we are. And then we also need like a healthy pinch of salt, you know, tie it all together. Maybe a little bit more than that. That doesn't seem like enough. There we go. Chris would be so proud. <laughs> so now I'm gonna mix that together. And then we're just going to pour that over top like snow. Honestly, it kind of looks like snow. And then very gently, we are going to coat everything. And then this needs to sit in the fridge overnight before we can go on to the next step. Oh my gosh, it smells incredible. I can't wait. <laughs> 
All right, new day or night, I guess. It's dip time. This has been chilling in the fridge, so now we have to strain it. We're gonna take this and we're gonna put it in here. Yeah, that was very liquidy. That makes sense, you wouldn't want that in a dip. Strain, 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 strain. Look at all that. Not my dip. Now obviously this is gonna be like a dip, like a party dip. However, you have to spread it on cream cheese. And so instead of doing like a full thing, I'm just gonna, you know, spread it on a cracker and just make sure that I like it first. So I have a cracker, I have some whipped cream cheese on top, and then I have the dip. So let's see how good this is. You know what? That's really good. That's really good. It's not as spicy as I was expecting it to be. It's very light and mild. It's got nice sweetness and nice brightness. Christopher, do you want to try this dip? It's very good. Yeah, I did a terrible job of putting that onto a Sorry. <laughs> cracker for you. Honestly, I liked it. It's quite a bit of salt. Tasty though. Processing whether or not in my life I've ever eaten a cranberry. <laughs> when, Honestly, that's... When would anyone ever eat a cranberry? I mean, Cranberry, cranberry sauce. sauce, fine, but like a fresh halved <laughs> cranberry. Technically my mom makes them. She makes them in her cranberry sauce. Okay, but that's an ingredient in a, I guess this is too, but like, it's like boiled full, yeah. and cooked and whatever. This is like raw. Okay, wait, what happens if you put uh, flaky salt on that? I don't know if this is enough. I have a sprinkle. Good, is yeah. it more? Okay, <laughs> tell me if that's better. I would not have thought salt myself personally as a person. Oh yeah. Is that way better? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, try another bite. Oh. Okay, okay, well now mm. now I have to try. Oh yeah, that's it. Right <laughs> okay, now I like that one. Now you like it, okay. Well, it's it not as- It was fine before, but this is really good. It was not as, as spicy as I was expecting no, it to be. No, it's spicy. Uh-uh. With the cream cheese, mildly it up. Yes, yes, it's very good. Needs a little bit more salt for our taste, but it's, it's very good. <laughs> okay, Chris is back. I want him to test out the, um, the pastry. Christopher, look at my pastries. Two of those are pretty. Okay, well, <laughs> listen, right? we, we can't all do, we can't. I like that a lot. Right? Now this one did look really good. I don't know what happened to her, but um, mm. that was a mitten. And it was okay. really that pretty. That would have been my guess for the record. It was a pretty mitten. All right. Let's all congratulate me on this beautiful snowflake. Well, I was gonna say, actually, I like both of these, but well, this is really- You don't like my Christmas tree. I like two thirds <laughs> of these. It does look like it has a bite mark taken out of it though. I may have eaten some of it. <laughs> the cutouts in the middle are the best part. Okay, take a bite of this. All right. Like you need to have like the full experience, not Pastry my experience, yeah. mangy bits. Very good. Right? Mm, I like those. Yeah. They look good. And they would be, um, they would be good with like like an apple filling or you could do also like a cherry yeah. cherry pie. Cherry would be good. I okay. was also um, I was looking at the website and they had bacon and eggs, like a like a like a kishi type. No. Blueberry cream cheese. That's what I was thinking. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's also an option. Don't um, it with bacon and eggs. Wh why on, not? Sure. Come on. What you got there? I got um, some hot chocolate. It's kind of um, kept abysmally looking. Looking, not tasting. Oh, no, Very say, important no, difference. Yeah. It was color changing. What was it before? White. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to taste it without thinking about the pink. <laughs> yeah, it's a very unsettling shade of pink, which I'm not a big fan of. It's it tastes not like white, white chocolate. White chocolate. I was yeah. gonna say, this is not a very good chocolate. It it's tastes like white, white chocolate. chocolate. That's, That's what it is. Yeah. Okay, give me another. Okay. okay. All right, no, I get it now. Yeah. I was like, it's a decent white what is, chocolate. What do I say about this? Yeah. <laughs> this is not chocolatey. Yes, okay. I mean, it tastes good. Yeah. It just wasn't chocolate. If you put, um, um, what was the, you know, remember last year, the peppermint patties that we made? Peppermint Becky. It's my own thing. I don't remember what the recipe was for that. What video was that? Peppermint Becky. <laughs> Unbelievable. It was like a it's creme de menthe, yeah. creme de cacao. And then it was in, in hot chocolate and we took it to the Santa Claus parade. It was so good. I yeah. feel like that would be very good in that. This is the last, I haven't tried this one yet. <gasps> oh, it, a bite out of it. it can't, yeah. There's no bites in it. It's a sugar cookie fudge. I like fudge. Right off the bat, I will say, I do like the fact that the the sprinkles didn't um, meld into like a brown goo, which I was I was a little bit nervous about that I would do that. However, I don't love the whole, um, I couldn't smooth it out really well. Mm. It wouldn't mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I just waited too long well, it was in stirring it. Hang on though, wait. Wait. The is bottom is smooth. No one needs to worry about the underside, right? Yep. Oh, well, there we yep. go. Better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I need to taste test it though. I don't know how big to cut fudge. That's a 
Good point. I don't normally eat fudge, so how big does one cut a fudge squar? I you get know? tired of eating fudge after the first two bites. Okay, like, so like oh, a... that was so good. Oh, that was good, but I'm done. Hopefully that's not the case with this one. That's... But even good fudge, that's how I feel Ooh, about it. It's a little bit greasy on the top. I guess this is technically the bottom. The right. bottom is a little bit greasy. That's okay. Cheers. Boop. It just tastes like um, white chocolate with sprinkles in it. You know, I get the condensed milk. Oh, it's so sweet. It is very sweet. I'm not sure I'm getting sugar cookie out of this. Mm -mm. That's very sweet. Again, it is fudge. I should set my expectations. Mm -hmm. it is, it's supposed to be sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I like the crunch of the sprinkles in it. I like so, that. I don't really, but I just don't like sprinkles. Unbelievable. Like, why do I want little sandy pebbles in my food? Sugary pebbles. It adds a crunch. It adds some texture. I would be so... I don't know, bored eating this after like two bites? You know what you'd enjoy? What? Peanuts. They add a nice flavorful crunch to baked goods. Not to fudge though, right guys? <laughs> no, who would want that? <laughs> okay, so of the things that you tried, what was your favorite? So I think this is very successful. I don't, again, I had two bites and I'm done. Oh yeah. But that kind of suggests it's a good fudge. <laughs> I good. like I those molds. I like good the Once molds. I figured out what it was. <laughs> the molds, yes. I like the molds. I mean, like it was just jam in the middle because I got lazy, but like. What's that over there? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Or maybe I intentionally forgot. These are the little um, kooky shot glasses. Oh, that reminds me. So I left this for a bit because I wanted to see if it would like start soaking through or anything. Nada enchilada. It's still in there. Like it hasn't moved. May I? But do not you want to, no, because it needs to be, it needs to be heated up a little bit. Does it? You have to bite mm. the cookie. That's the whole point. I think that it would not be very good if it didn't have the chocolate lining. No, it wouldn't. The, the chocolate lining really makes a difference here. The cookie itself is like a three. It's much better microwaved. Okay, all right, that's fair. But the chocolate lining really plays and that's very good. Again, it's really, I, I understand what the struggle might have been to create these. Oh, you can't make this in like a nice, soft, break apart cookie. It doesn't work. Like, I, the, there are structural limitations here. I think this could be fun to do a real shot out of. Right? I kind of want to try the, the dark chocolate though. I don't know what to put in it though. Just like milk? I mean, I've got other things. Like what? Coffee tequila. Coffee tequila? Yeah, you remember? No. Interesting because you put it in the microwave for eight seconds and it does not feel any different. Which is just interesting to me because sometimes when you put things in the microwave for eight seconds, it turns lava hot. Oh. Remember that? No. I've had this for a while. Have you not had this? It's quite good. I don't think so. You just, just it by itself? Yeah. Patron does make a good tequila. I'm just telling you right now, I'm taking. I'm not taking a full shot. No, 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 have a sippo. Uh, I'm gonna have a yeah. sippo, all right? How much do you want? tequila -y, coffee -y. Mm hmm mm-hmm. I get it. Listen, I get it. Have some, but then take a bite. Mm, oh, it's softer than, yeah. Oh, that's good. Is that one good? With, with the, the, with the mm -hmm. ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh, have maybe that's what we're- Have another little sip, okay. and then take a bite. Mm, oh, that coffee? With the chocolate? Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. Mm. Okay, but can you imagine this with the peppermint Beckys? I can. It would be so good. We don't have, what was it? What were we missing? I don't have creme de cacao here. Uh, we have to go and get some because that would be unbelievable in these. I'm very pleased with this. Yeah, it's a good product. I like it. I like it a lot. That's my favorite one. Okay, well, there you go. Maybe yeah, we'll make more of those. Peppermint Beckys. I you. appreciate it. Let me know which of these was your favorite. Like, I, I am struggling here because I, I feel like I liked a lot of them. And big thanks to Kiba Co for sponsoring this video. You can go and check out the link down below. I have linked it for you guys to get your first month for free with a subscription of any of these crates. I hope you guys are having a fantastic, fantastic week, and I will see you guys all in the next one.